Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, Contemporary Issues. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessings be on each and every one of you. In our series, we are looking at contemporary issues which confront the Muslim nation today. Western culture and Western society has arrived at certain positions, certain, taken certain attitudes towards a variety of different practices, and they look at those who do not conform to their ways, follow their views as being backward and in need of guidance and instruction. So what we're doing is we're looking at some issues which the West oftentimes state with regards to Muslims and which there are very reasonable and logical explanations if only those who point the finger would take the time to find out. The issue we're looking at in this segment is that of divorce. Divorce being easy, as it's typically portrayed in Western society, that divorce in the Muslim world is just for a man to say, thou art divorced, thou art divorced, thou art divorced, and that's it, finish. Divorce is over. This is the general impression given. I know myself, prior to becoming a Muslim, this is what this understanding which I had, I received from the media. This is how it's normally portrayed. And actually, there are some ignorant Muslims who actually think this too. So I won't say it's only Westerners, but there is among Muslims those who ignorantly think that merely saying you're divorced, you're divorced, you're divorced, ends a marriage. That's it, divorce. That a person, man can do that anytime and there ends the marriage. However, the reality is that the divorce is not that easy. It's not that easy. There are particular conditions which must be fulfilled before a man can pronounce divorce. For example, among those conditions is that it not be at the time of the woman's menstrual cycle. I mean, of course, some of us say, well, what does this have to do with it? What, why, why does it matter? Well, the prophet forbade the pronouncement of divorce when a woman is in her menses. Such a pronouncement is invalid. A man may say it, but it's not counted. It's not considered legal. Modern science has discovered what we now refer to as PMS, premenstrual syndrome, where women regularly, because of these biological changes, there are certain psychological changes which cause women to become very crabby, very, you know, uptight, any little thing sets them off. You know, many women go through this right at the time of menses, just immediately before it and immediately into it, the first few days, whatever. This is a standard across the world among many women. So in order to avoid a situation where it is due to these biological changes which has affect the psychology of the woman, which caused her to, to maybe respond to her husband in such a way which leads him then to pronounce divorce, Islam says no. Don't pronounce divorce in the time of menstruation because it may be a product of this. It's not appropriate. It's not legal. So it is not just whenever a man he gets up in the morning he feels, oh, today is, it sounds, feels like a good day to divorce my wife, so I'm just going to divorce you. No, it's not like that. Anytime, anyhow, anywhere, no. Secondly, we have to consider another principle. According to Islamic law, in the period between menses, one menses and the second menses, this period between, this is when the man is allowed to pronounce the divorce. If in that period, prior to his pronouncement, he had sexual relations with her, then it is not legal for him to make the pronouncement. It's not legal. What Islam is saying here basically is that, hey, 
if you have that much feeling for your wife that you would have these relations, then you shouldn't be pronouncing divorce. You, should, you need to think about it. You need to think about it for a while. So it's not permissible for him to pronounce the divorce until after she's had a menses and enters into another period between the menses. So this is another condition. So it's again, not any time, anyhow. Thirdly, if after the man makes the pronouncement, he has sexual relations with his wife, out of desire he has grace, then the pronouncement is canceled. So he has to stay clear of her. You know? The, he has to wait. The pronouncement doesn't end the marriage immediately. There is a waiting period. The waiting period is three menstrual cycles. Part of it is to make sure that the woman is not pregnant by him. And because if she just left him, they got divorced, and she left him and married somebody else immediately afterwards, then maybe she becomes pregnant. It's not certain whose child this is. You know, so in order to prevent any kind of confusion which may develop you know, in this regard, you know, Islam gives her a waiting period in order, in order to confirm that she's not pregnant by her husband. Also in those three menstrual cycle periods, the woman and man are required to live together. Of course, in many parts of the Muslim world, a number of parts of the Muslim world, the custom is that once the divorce is pronounced, the woman goes home to her parents. This is not a part of Islamic law. They should remain in the home together. And that time should be a time giving them a period in which they can reconcile and, you know, come back together. So that waiting period there is a period which allows chance for reconciliation now uh, what also has to be taken into account here is that if the woman is already pregnant then the her the period of waiting if she is in beyond her her um, she's in the first month or in a second month like this, a period of waiting is until she delivers. If she's already in her sixth month, meaning that she only has three months remaining, that's at the time of delivery, but beyond that, in her seventh month, it goes back to a three-month period of waiting. So unless, the, if the period is, due to her pregnancy, greater than three months to delivery, then the divorce is held until the delivery. If it is less than three months, then it's taken back to three months. So, again, it's not automatic. A man may di pronounce divorce on his wife, she's in her first month, he has to wait nine months before divorce comes through. This gives more opportunity, especially because the child is involved, children are involved here, you know, for that individual to be around his wife while she's pregnant, going through her changes, these type of things, being conscious and aware of the child and all these other things in order to help them possibly come back together, work it out. Furthermore, Prophet ﷺ, in an authentic statement, had stated that the divorce pronouncement is not valid at the time of mental seizure. That is, if the man, you know, is in a rage where he just, he loses it, and he pronounces divorce, it's not valid, not counted. If he's merely angry, of course, it is valid because mostly people pronounce divorce when they're angry but if it reaches the anger reaches the point where he's just you know his mind is seized he's saying things afterwards he said what did i say here people are amazed at him he's saying things they, they you know he's not aware it's not, he loses consciousness of what's around him in that kind of state then the pronouncement is not considered to be valid so we have a variety of conditions which affect the process of pronouncement. Yes, it is the man who makes the pronouncement, primarily. But it is not just any time, one, two, three, it's over. No. There are conditions, and there is a waiting period, etc. Now, once that waiting period is passed, the three monthly cycles or three months takes passes, then the divorce becomes complete.
Now, uh, what also has to be taken into account here is that if the woman is already pregnant, then the, her, the period of waiting, if she is in beyond her, her um, she's in the first month or in the second month, like this, a period of waiting is until she delivers. If she's already in her sixth month, meaning that she only has three months remaining, that's at the time of delivery, but beyond that, in her seventh month, it goes back to a three-month period of waiting. So unless the, if the period is, due to her pregnancy, greater than three months to delivery, then the divorce is held until the delivery. If it is less than three months, then it's taken back to three months. So, again, it's not automatic. A man may di pronounce divorce on his wife, she's in her first month, he has to wait nine months before divorce comes through. This gives more opportunity, especially because the child is involved, children are involved here, you know, for that individual to be around his wife while she's pregnant, going through her changes, these type of things, being conscious and aware of the child and all these other things in order to help them possibly come back together, work it out. Furthermore, Prophet ﷺ, in an authentic statement, had stated that the divorce pronouncement is not valid at the time of mental seizure. That is, if the man, you know, is in a rage where he just, he loses it, and he pronounces the divorce, it's not valid, not counted. If he's merely angry, of course, it is valid because mostly people pronounce divorce when they're angry. But if it reaches, the anger reaches the point where he's just, you know, his mind is seized. He's saying things, afterwards he said, what did I say? People are amazed at him, he's saying things, they, they, you know. He's not aware, he's not, he loses consciousness of what's around him. In that kind of state, then the pronouncement is not considered to be valid. So, we have a variety of conditions which affect the process of pronouncement. Yes, it is the man who makes the pronouncement, primarily. But it is not just any time, one, two, three, it's over. No. There are conditions, and there is a waiting period, etc. Now, once that waiting period has passed, the three monthly cycles or three months takes passes, then the divorce becomes complete. One may argue, from Western perspective, that's still pretty easy. In the West, I mean, for a person to get divorced, in most cases, I mean, you have to go to the court, it's a long procedure, you have to wait, and, you know, maybe you have to fight it out in the court, and, you know, wash each other's linen in public, he did this, he said that, he did the other, and all these kind of things, you know. So there, there's a lot more complications involved. So in that respect, yes. Islamic divorce is relatively easy. It's not that easy as portrayed initially, as I said, but there is a certain amount of ease there. But this... In the West, marriage came out of a tradition, Christian tradition, where marriage was not to be broken. You know, as Jesus was supposed to have said, you know, that what God has joined in the heavens, let no man separate. So divorce was canceled, not allowed. And to this day in Catholicism, there's no divorce. No divorce. A man may separate in his bed from his wife if he finds her committing adultery, etc. But divorce, no. I mean, Jesus was even supposed to have said, you know, to if a man divorces and marries another woman, it's adultery. To marry a divorced woman is adultery. You know, these supposed statements attributed to Jesus, of course, from a Muslim perspective, we don't accept this. This is not in keeping with, with Jewish law. And Jesus clearly had stated that he didn't come to break the law, he came to uphold it. And that no one would enter paradise, heaven, until every iota of the law was fulfilled. So, I mean, these kind of statements we don't accept. This is erroneous. And, but it is from this foundation that Christian society, you know, took this position, no divorce. And from that, Western legal systems are suffering from it. Of course, they're trying to find ways and means to make it easier, 
I mean, they have what they call Mexican divorces where people have the money, they can fly down to Mexico, you know, in a matter of an hour, stamp this paper, that paper, the other, the divorce is over and they fly back. The Mexican divorce, very famous for its business. They're in Mexico. But from a Western legal perspective, the norm is that it takes a long time. But from the Islamic perspective, this is a contract. And in contracts, when people make an agreement, you sign, I sign, we've got an agreement here. This is based on you saying, I agree. I do. In the marriage, I do. When you want this contract to end, what do you do? You say, I don't. The contract's over. We no longer agree. We'll end the contract. It's relatively simple. Similarly, from the Islamic perspective in the divorce, the person comes in saying, I do for the marriage. They're able to go out by saying, I don't. So there's relative ease in that respect. It avoids a lot of the costs and the problems, etc., which are involved in Western-style divorces. But it is not that easy as to be merely a triple statement of the individual to his wife, you're divorced, and that's it. So this is the first point with regards to divorce which needs to be considered. And Western society is moving more and more towards the Islamic-style divorces, which are simpler, uh, conjugal, or they call prenuptial agreements where people are writing out contractual things prior to the marriage, you know. I mean, it's going more and more towards the Islamic-style marriage that is a contract. People are coming together, agreeing to come together. You know, there are certain conditions, etc., etc., obligations and rights. And whatever else they agree on, that's between them, you know. And consequently, of course, if they want to end this, they're able to end it. People's rights are still protected, etc., the second point which I'd like to look at with regards to divorce is the common misconception that divorce is the man's right. Woman has no, has no right to divorce in Islamic law. The man pronounced divorce, that's it. This is not, in fact, correct. A woman may pronounce divorce as the man pronounces divorce if at the time of the marriage she puts it in her contract. These are amongst the things, because when the marriage is taking place, the judge will ask the woman and the man, are there any conditions you'd like to include in your marriage contract? And if she says, among the conditions is that I have the right to pronounce divorce like my husband, and the husband does not object, the husband-to-be doesn't object, then it's in the contract, she has the right just as he does. This is one method. Furthermore, if at any time in the marriage, you know, things are not working out, for example, but the husband is reluctant, and she says, give me permission, and he gives her permission to pronounce it. She can then pronounce it, as he did, following the same basic conditions. Thirdly, the woman may institute divorce from her side through the court. The court instituted divorce known as khula, where she approaches the courts, presents her case, and the court uh, acts on her behalf you know, calls up the man and begins the process of divorce, you know, informing him, etc. And this, of course, is from the practice of the Prophet, may God's peace must be upon him, where such divorces took place in his time. Women who, for reasons, because of course if somebody saying, well, it has to be for a really major reason. No, if a woman finds herself in a situation where, you know, she cannot stand to live with this person any longer, you know, that is enough reason. As it existed in the time of the Prophet Muhammad a woman came to him and said, you know, there's nothing wrong with my husband, he's a good man, looks after me, provides for me, etc. But I just can't stand him. And perhaps she got married without really, you know, seeing him first or whatever, you know, arranged marriage, she got into it, and it just became a mess for her. She feared for her religion. She was treating him badly when really he was a good man. So she asked the Prophet. And the Prophet asked her, are you willing to give back your dowry? Because the dowry which was given, in the case of female instituted divorce, she has to give back the dowry. In which case, she answered when the Prophet asked her, she said, I'll give him twice the amount. And he said, no, just give him back what he gave you. And he called the man and processed the divorce. So, 
A woman may pronounce divorce if she's given that right at any point in the marriage or if she has that right included in her marital contract. Thirdly, she may also institute a court proceeding for divorce which is based on her own needs, etc., etc. So, the idea that divorce is the man's right, no. Yes, primarily, as I mentioned earlier, it is the right of the man to make the pronouncement, but it's not an exclusive right. It's put initially in his hands because he is the one in authority in the home, in the family. It has to do with issues of authority, part of the family structure. So he has primarily that right. However, it is not an absolute right. And there are conditions to pronounce it, and women may also pronounce it if certain conditions are met. But with that, dear viewers, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of the program. We will continue in our next segment looking at the consequences of divorce and issues of alimony. Now, this has become a contemporary issue, especially in India, where uh, the courts sought to institute alimony in the Muslim divorce, uh, where it doesn't exist. We will look at the issues are surrounding it. Why in Islam, after divorce, there is no alimony per se. I hope you'll be with us in the next segment of our program, dear viewers. And I'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.